I've spent a lot of my life seeking happiness. Five and a half years ago, I made a video on this very subject. It was one of the first videos I ever made. Wow. I feel like so much of what I've made over the course of my career has been driven by my desire to figure things out, to chart out these choppy waters. I want to live a happy life, but I feel like I live in a world that promises so many false answers to my questions. So I took a little trip to the happiest part of the world, a region that consistently ranks the highest in that regard. This is going to be the first in many adventures I plan to have in this corner of the globe. It's funny, it's a hard thing to talk about happiness with people. Paradoxically, I have put so much pressure on myself to attain it that I would often make myself more unhappy. So in this new series exploring happiness, I've decided to start in the Netherlands, which along with the Nordic countries, regularly lands at the very top of the World Happiness Report, a publication from the UN. That's exactly where I went, and I'd like to share with you what I learned when I was there. My journey into this world begins in a town called Eindhoven, where I visited my friends Sadia and Robin, who run the channel Pickup Limes. Look at you, you just look happy. <laughs> you just look happy, like look at how you're sitting. That's a, that's a happy man <laughs> posture with the cup of coffee. Would you say coffee has like an influence on your happiness? Definitely, <laughs> like a necessity. Robin was able to invite a few friends over that I'm going to ask Questions to. Questions to about... Being about, Dutch. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I need to get to the bottom of this, you know? I need to figure out, like, all right, what's, what's really going on here? I'm doing research on happiness in this part of the world. I have to have your input. This is going to give you a little bit of a heads up. You're talking to engineers right now, so they're going <laughs> to immediately think, like, okay, what's happiness? First, we have to get the definition exactly. right, yeah. you what's know? It's happiness compared to other countries, right? So that's what you have to think about. Like, why are we more happy than? Yeah, but maybe not. Maybe you can just think like, why am I happy? What makes me happy? What enables me to be happy? Seeing you with only once a week. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out this is a tricky thing to pin down. I reject the idea of a universal definition of happiness. Not all things can be measured precisely. That being said, it is interesting to break down how it works and what sorts of trends we can discover. Usually when we talk about happiness rankings, it's based off of the World Happiness Report, which comes out yearly and is based on individuals' ratings of their own lives, so in many ways it's self-evaluated. This is done using a Cantrell Ladder Survey. People are asked to rate their own lives on a scale of 0 to 10, and the report correlates the life evaluation results with various life factors. So do you guys feel like there's, okay, you've talked about how it's like the country is set up so that it's, it's hard to hit rock bottom. Yeah. Is there a cultural aspect, do you think, that's in the mix as well? People are really open, easy, really direct. I think that's something that sometimes clashes with other countries. Yeah. Really direct in, in what we say, but it's all meant in the best way possible. So it just yeah, makes it really chest. easy to, yeah. Dutch directness is, that's harsh for an outsider. Yeah, yeah it's, it's ridiculous, but it, I think it's a very good point. The fact that you're getting it off your chest. You say it as it is, you don't hold things inside. Dutch people are really hard to really offend. Like, of course, you're not going to be happy for instance at work if somebody tells you, like, you're not doing your job well. But they're not going to be, like, like hurt with an assault. They're just going to be like, okay, criticism, whatever. Going to exactly, because they're used to reason. people being yeah. so direct. Any Maybe because everything is so, so flat and boring and yeah, easy yeah, yeah. and risk-free, we just make an effort to make everything as crazy as possible. Yeah. Like, crazy. Everything is a party. Make if an we effort can make to... a party, then we make a party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of true, right? We, there's so much to do, always. <laughs> you guys really do seem pretty happy. <laughs> there was one word that kept coming up that seemed inextricably linked to happiness. Gezelligheid. Gezelligheid is, the, the easiest translation would be, I think, coziness, but that doesn't really capture the meaning, because gezelligheid is bigger. It's a birthday, it's sitting around the fire, it's chatting, <laughs> it's having a warm drink with your friends, or having a beer, sitting out on the terraces, feeling safe, feeling... It's like laughing, sitting a, hugging... Sitting in a bar, like talking to your friends, but it's not being at a club. That's exactly, different. exactly, exactly. It's like a warmth. Yeah. Exactly, it's a warmth, yeah. the, the social warmth, that is, I think, the best. Yeah. People on, in the comment section are gonna go mental over this. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> because, like, Zalakheid is like a Dutch thing that everybody, no, everybody has a hard time defining this, I guess. Hezelig is a word you can't really translate into English. It's about connection. Hezel by itself, meaning companion. 
Okay, so I would love to hear your thoughts on Gezelligheid. Gezelligheid. Dutch people sitting together, drinking a coffee, eating a cookie, and then after that drinking a beer, and it's everlasting. Everlasting love, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Gezelligheid. I have a piece of wood with a big fireplace in it, and every... A forest and every month I go with uh, five, six, seven friends. We go there and we uh, talking about uh, making jokes, drinking a beer, roasting uh, something uh, vegan, you know. <laughs> what is it that makes your life really worth? Yeah. When did you feel happy? Oh. <laughs> In Nederland leven we veel binnen in, in, ons in ons huis, maar juist doordat je inderdaad veel uitstapjes gaat maken, juist andere culturen leert kennen, andere steden leert kennen, daardoor, ja, ik word daar zelf wel heel gelukkig van dat ik dat inderdaad wel, uh, dat ik gewoon andere culturen zie en andere hmm. Kijk, mensen en, zie. En hoe gelukkig je bent is relatief. Kijk, je bij weten hoe het hier is, maar pas juist als je ziet hoe het ergens anders gaat, en ik denk dat dat Nederlanders veel doen, dus je kijkt ook veel naar buiten, besef je nog meer en dan kun je dus toch ook veel meer waarde aan hangen. Having grown up in the U.S., I have always felt a lot of pressure to be happy. As if it's a tangible place, as if there was a rush to get there. As if not being there means you're somehow broken or screwed up in some way. It's weird to think that the pursuit of happiness can make us so unhappy. I think it's amazing how joy can spring out of spontaneous moments, unplanned and unpinnable, like little gifts from God reminding us that life is indeed very beautiful. I mean, over here in the Netherlands, and maybe also in the, in the US, you have more maybe the physical struggles, like the pressure struggles from, uh, yeah, everything is so good in here, so make something at your life. And over, mm -hmm. I don't know, in a, a more poor country, you have more like the survive stress and yeah. happiness, and I don't know, like that kind of stuff. Mm. Mm. So it's different. Happiness is over there, I think, a little bit different than here. Yeah, the measure is different. Yeah. Yeah. I spent some time exploring the country with Sadia. These glasses are these prescription or just because you're trying to look hipster? Oh my god, what do you think? <laughs> the hipster one. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, like I said, hipster. Are you kidding me, dude? I'm fine, I can see perfectly. Then you have very, very bad eyesight. <laughs> That really hurts. Yeah, I was gonna say, you <laughs> cannot possibly, that there's no way you were able to see normally with that. Where have you taken me? I've taken you to Ravenclaw. That's <laughs> <laughs> kind of what it sounds like, right? <laughs> what the heck? What is it actually called? Ravenstein, I think. There, there you go. How many of these little towns have you visited in the Netherlands? Do you feel like it's a country loaded with them? There's so many of them, and they're so cute. I feel like every time I see it, I'm overwhelmed by how adorable it is. It just feels like little like Hobbiton Shires, like little Hobbit homes and the little lakes and the little the little bikes everywhere. So cute. I'm a big fan of this like brick aesthetic going on here all over the place. Extremely quaint. I love being Canadian and I love I loved having lived in Canada. I never thought I would have lived somewhere else. And I remember the first time I came to the Netherlands, I was like, I can see myself living here. So I think that says something. Like, it's a beautiful country. I think they really value um, taking, like, they even pause, like, a pause, a break in a working day. You know, I feel like the North American mentality anyway is like, go, 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 glorifying busy. And I think with the Dutch, they really, like, will stop to have a coffee together, to converse, to connect. And I remember the first few times I did that with Dutch people, I kept feeling like I was being a nuisance to them. Like, I was trying to wrap up the conversation and be like, no, 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 you go, you do your own thing. But, like, they want to connect, they want to take it easy, they want to step away from work for a moment. I think another thing is that a lot of Dutch people bike everywhere, and there's something to be said for that physical activity, right? And often when I'm like, oh, it's such a good workout, Dutch people will be like, that's not a workout, that's commuting. Because they don't see it as a workout, despite the fact that like your heart rate is high, you're often biking 20, 30 minutes to and from work or school, and that's just standard. That's normal. That's very normal. This is the Netherlands for you. Dun, 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 dun. So I think, I mean, that's that's got to say something about your mental state, right? If you're constantly active. You know, however cliche it's going to sound, maybe happiness is way simpler than what's marketed to us. 
one of the highlights of last year for me was coming here Aww. and spending time with you guys. A huge part of my happiness is spending time with people I care about and that like share that excitement for life in their own way. Super important to have that. Life is meant to be shared in many ways. Absolutely. Okay, so this is a series to be continued. I have some really cool stuff I'm very excited about coming soon. I think the topic of happiness and how we choose to spend our lives is endlessly fascinating. So fascinating, in fact, that I have made a class actually related to the subject called How to Document Your Life, which is available on Skillshare, who are the sponsor of this video. For those of you that don't know, Skillshare is a platform where you can learn anything from how to shoot and edit a video to how to draw or design or document your life. So if you're interested, the first 1,000 of you that use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. This is an offer that we'll be running through the summer. Consider checking it out. And if you check out one of my classes on there, I would absolutely love to know what you think. As always, my current classes on there cover the topics of capturing special moments in your life, creativity, finding your voice and presenting yourself online. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for watching. I don't usually ask for this, but this current season of content is going to come to an end pretty soon before I you know, pick things up a little bit down the road for the next season of content. And one way or a couple ways really that you can help me out with this and to know about my future content is if you give this video a like and if you hit the bell icon to know about future uploads when I pick things back up again. So consider it. There's no obligation, obviously. I just want to say, once again, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys soon.